Welcome to another edition of Sanus Vision Art Life. My name is Adewale Booker Jr. Please review us, rate us, give us a five star, don't be a hater. Today I want to talk about Carja for Assassins, but I want to talk about how I created the whole Carja for Assassins universe. I know on different shows I've talked about like uh, the character profiles and all that stuff like that, but I want to talk about how I got to create the whole universe. Um, growing up, as I said before, I used to watch all these different cartoons. X-Men, Gargoyles, Avengers, um, uh, Techno Man, Gundam Wing, you name it. And as I start to realize, I had an intention of drawing every single character, but what happened to me was I got bored. And I started to realize, well, it's nice to draw somebody else's creation, but what if I created my own characters? So in 2009, I started working on this project. Um, I just, I'd already created one character, Cajun. But it was never really something set in stone. Like I had different drawings, different sketches, but it wasn't anything like that. But then in 2009, officially, I started. And the first person I drew was Sincere. Now, Sincere is a character, part of Carjack's team. And she's based, I based it on my dream girl. I said to myself, what would I want my dream girl to look like? What kind of woman would I want to be my future wife or something like that? Somebody who was strong, intelligent, uh, skilled, um, smart, independent, all those kind of things. And I came up with the name Sincere. Mostly because I just want honesty is really what I wanted from any woman that I was going to end up with. And I said, OK, I'm going to call her sincere, but what's she going to look like? So I spent like the first first uh, three months drawing her, three to four months drawing her, excuse me. And I was like, OK, this is looking kind of cool. And then when I finished, I was like, oh, man, this kind of sucks. I need to start all over again. So I start all over again I, and I drew it again. And I was like, OK, this looks better because. I was just drawing, but I, and then I started to look at different comics that I had. And I was like, okay, this character has that. That character has that. So I looked at a lot of female characters I had drawn before from Storm to Wonder Woman to Hawk Girl to uh, Vixen. So all these different characters that I had drawn, I said, okay, this is what I wanted to have. Um, and I didn't want her to have any powers. So I said, let me draw somebody who's highly combatant and she's smart, give her a deep background. So I did that. So I got her down. Then I went on to the other characters. Um, I went to Escalade. Excuse me, I drew Glocks, then I drew Raspoon. Um, I drew, excuse me, I drew Glocks. That's my brother Tyler's character. I drew Raspoon. Uh, that's my other brother character, Tunde's character. Then I drew my sister's character, Shion Escalade. So Escalade is Shion. Then I drew Shepard, and I drew Sincere. My best friend, Shepard, is based on my best friend. And then Diesel is based on this guy, consider an older brother, Judah. So Shepard is Nere, and Judah is uh, Diesel. And then I drew myself, Cajun. And, and, and I realized, man, okay, I, I got something here. Now, Cajun was hard to draw because I went through different armor design. And keeping in mind that he was the first one that I actually drew. Even after all this time, I still wasn't satisfied with what I drew. So with uh, with each character, it was like, okay, Glox is like Tile. Tile is very great with computers and stuff like that. So I made Glox a very techie guy. Then Raspion is very logical, just like Tunde. He likes things to be very, he's not just going to go for, oh, this is written in stone. You know, it's very scientific in the way he thinks. And then my sister, of course, emotional, great intelligence, powerful and strong, Escalade, Shion. And I realized she needed to be a, a team leader because well, that's what she is. And then my best friend, of course, he's a doctor. And so making Shepard a surgeon was logical. And keeping in mind, Shepard is blind. And of course, Diesel was based on this guy, Judah, who I consider like an older brother. He's powerful. He's strong as an engineer. He's very, he's very techie with stuff. So I said, okay, I got that. Then there was my character, uh, Cajun. I was like, oh, wow, okay. I want this guy to have armor because I love Iron Man. My favorite characters were Iron Man, Turtles, um, anybody that was leader. So Leonardo from Turtles, Blade, um, Iron Man, Wolverine. I, I always, and Ryo from Ronin Warriors. So when I created Cajun, I wanted to be a part of everybody, even Techno Man. I wanted to have the different attributes for all these ca characters that I like. So creating Cajun was weird. I created him. I got him. I was like, okay. So I spent from 2009 up until about 2000 and I might even say almost till the end of 2000 and almost till 2011 working on just the carjacks and through that whole time all i had was carjacks i was like carjacks 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 and then i had to create the villains and of course you've got sun Tzu, artillery excursion revo kanji snipes yukon of course the coyotes and they were more based on family members well i chose like revo is based on my cousin artillery is based on my cousin and then sun Tzu's my villain side right so and i realized okay I don't have a name for the villains. And then one day I was just working out in the gym and something came up to me. It's like, Carjack for Assassins. I'm like, oh, that sounds so cool. And I said it to myself again. I was like, ooh, Carjack for Assassins. Like, oh, that is so sick. 
I think I got something here. So I spent another year from 2011 up until about t- the end of t- 2012. Specifically, I would say I finished the characters around the week before the week of October 19, 2012. And on October 19th, 2012, I officially uh, went to FedEx to print the first 24 by 36 poster. The first poster ever of the Card Jack Assassin. It was the version one. I was so proud of myself. I remember that day I looked at my bank account. I only had $65. I was thinking to myself, I got bills to pay. Uh, pay the bills or print the poster. Y'all know what I did. You darn right I printed the poster. And I'm looking at it right now, man. It's a classic. Every time I look at it, I think about how far I've come. And I remember writing to myself, on the, on the left side, I wrote my name. I signed it, of course, Adewale Cajun Nagbuke Jr., October 19th, 2012. And then on the right side, I put Aspire and Achieve. This is the only the beginning of my dreams. And I even put a special note inside the poster itself. I'm not going to open the frame, but it was like I knew it was the beginning of something great. And then in 2012, October 19, 2012 is when I finished, right? So I, my brother tells me, hey, Junior, there's Long Beach Comic Con. I mean, Tyo, who's AKA Glocks, and he says, uh, you know, you should start trying to go to these comic expos. I said, what are comic expos? Because I had never heard of them before. So we, we went to it. I think we paid about $15 to get in, each one of us. And I was walking around looking at everybody's art. I was like, whoa, this is so cool. And I would go talk to different artists and I was seeing different types of art. And I realized these individual artists at the shows are independent. And I was like, this would be a great place to get out Carja for Assassins. So while doing that, I realized, okay, I needed a book. And right now, y'all, I'm holding in my hand uh, the bio book uh, of the Carja for Assassins uh, universe. And, and what it what incorporated was going to be the height, weight, character profiles and stuff like that. And I was like, I need something I can sell to people at the shows, aside from posters, but also to a way to promote Card Jack Assassin. So what I did was I started working on the book. So I probably worked on that from after the date completion of October 19, 2012. From that date, I probably spent another almost a year constructing the bio book. Because you got to keep in mind, I had drawings, but the characters had no names. So all they had was were the alias names. So And I was like, they need real names. So as I started looking at the drawings and I started putting the pages together for each character, I was like, okay, what am I going to call Cajun? I'm going to call him Julius Jones. What am I going to call uh, Sarah? I'm going to call her Sarah Jones. And the name Jones for me, I chose the name Jones because I felt like it was a name that symbolized love. Jones. Because uh, y'all are going to laugh, but the name Jones, actually, I was watching uh, this movie called Love Jones. And I was like, wow, okay, I need a name. I went through different names. I wanted an African name, but I wanted to first start off with like an English name. So I said, okay, I'm going to choose. I like this name, Jones. Um, let's go with that. And so then I got Cajun was going to be Julius Jones, Escalade Sarah Jones, Glocks Chris Jones, Raspune Sean Jones. And then, of course, I went on to the other characters, Diesel. His name was going to be Ben Gray. You know I'm saying then I went on to the next character, uh, Cynthia. Her name was going to be Scarlet Gray. And remember, Cynthia. Now, one thing I didn't say was Scarlet and Diesel our brother and sister, Scarlet Diesel and Artillery, our siblings. Then, of course, Shepard, Vincent Pierce. I was like, okay, these names are cool. And it was really important to me to choose names that I felt like weren't, um, uh, they weren't names that came from slavery. That mattered to me a lot. Um, I was very specific about names. Um, even though I was going to choose English names, but I wasn't going to choose names that I felt like were, like, especially the last name. It was really important to me to choose names that weren't slave type. And so, what I did was choose names that were like either objects or colors. I did my best to do that. And then I went on to the villains. And as I got to the villains, I was like, okay, so we're going to call them the assassins, right? So Sun Tzu, I was like, I'm going to call him Blaine Bishop because I like uh, I like chess. And to me, Bishop is the most important figure in chess. Um, I, feel, I, I, feel, I feel like the bishop does all the work and he should also too get all the rewards. Uh, so I decided I was going to call him Blaine Bishop and Blaine as in like, a, 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 like a like a like a like a stain on this earth, like something that's gonna scar this planet, like wants to take over. That's why I called him Blaine Bishop. Um, I, I'm really a big fan of uh, the Sun Tzu general, but I was like, I gotta call. What am I gonna call this guy? So I decided to call him Sun Tzu. And then of course you got artillery. Like I told y'all, Aeon Gray, and I I like the name Aeon because it's sort of Nigerian. Because I'm Nigerian, so I was like, I'm gonna choose the name Aeon Gray. Um, it was like something that you wouldn't normally hear of, but it's like that is a very cool name. Then, of course, I've got Excursion, who's known as Ruben Drones. And as I told y'all before, Drones, I, I'm really into, like, uh, he's military. So I'm really into, um, like, planes and, and F-22s and stuff like that. And, of course, this guy is a, he's former Marine. So I'm going to call him something like that, Ruben Drones. Then, of course, you got Kanji Revo, Kanji Lee, Tuan Lee, 
Um, kanji to me, kanji for y'all don't know in Japanese means strength. And I'm a, I, and I was like, I'm gonna call him Lee because I really like the name Lee. Like I stated before, I wanted names that didn't have any slave connotations to it. It was really important to me. And of course, Tuan Lee, I have a good friend named Tuan. I was like, dude, you got a cool name. I think I'm gonna have to call Rivo Tuan. And that's why I got the name Tuan Lee. And then of course, then I had Snipes, Nicole Pham. I'm mean, like thinking, wait, he just gave this woman a Vietnamese name. Well, I thought the name Nicole was awesome because I worked with a coworker when I was working at uh, CVS. She was an awesome lady, very nice person. I was like, Nicole, you got a very cool name. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna give one of my characters your name. She's like, that's kind of cool. And if, I just, I was just getting names that I thought were really cool, and I, I wanted to be diverse. And then of course you got Yukon, who's known as Titus Manaluga. Um, I, I felt like Ty, Titus was like a, a name that meant like a person was strong, powerful. Then of course the name Manaluga, as I stated before, I wanted something that was tropical from the islands, from the Wild Islands. That's how I went with that. Then of course you got the Coyotes, who have no name. But when I started this journey, I was just like, okay. Now I've got names for these characters. I've got profiles. I've got height, weight, and all that good stuff. I've got this book. I finished it. Then I started going to Comic Expos around 2013. My first show was Long Beach Comic Con. As I said before, it wasn't successful, yo, but that wasn't really what was important. Just the fact that I had my characters, I had a place to put them. And I always had these three books. Um, each drawing book had 50 pages in there. But the center book always had the Carja of Assassin universe, all the Carja of Assassin characters. And... Version 1, really people weren't paying attention, so they're flipping through all the other stuff that I had. But then version 2. Then when I got to version 3, specifically version 4, is when people really started to pay attention to my characters. And then um, I remember people started to say, oh, so who are these guys? And I'll have these 10, 15-minute conversations about Glocks. I'd have these conversations about Raspune, Cajun, Escalade, uh, Diesel, Shepard, Sincere, Sun Tzu, Artillery, Excursion, all of them, Revo, Kanji. And Snipes and Yukon, and, and they would ask me, like, so what universe? And the people want me to, I say, look, I can't tell you everything about this universe, but I can tell you this. These characters are awesome, first and foremost. They're highly combatant. They have, they have like, these cool backgrounds from where they're from. And because I, I didn't try to limit myself to America. I wanted these guys to be global characters where they were, they were, they were traveling across the world to, do, to save different places, to do different things. And it was so important to not live in stereotype because a lot of tv is stereotype well i was like screw stereotypes i'm gonna make up my own rules and so being the creator you can do a lot of different things and when you spend that amount of time we're talking almost four years to create characters 15 powerful characters i'm gonna i'm gonna come up with what suits them and what's best for me and what the vision i have and i'm i would have these conversations with people and i remember the first time i sold uh a uh, uh one of my characters and i believe the first um the first character that I saw in the Card of Assassin universe was, was Escalade. I was so amped up. Oh, my God. I was so jacked up. And uh, I was like, okay, finally, somebody sees these guys. And then I went on to version 5. And when I got to version 5, right around, around the time, it was around 2018. So I remember specifically WonderCon. After all this time, from 2013 till 2018, that's five years, y'all, of trying to promote Card of Assassin, trying to pull them up, pull them up, pull them up, come to different versions. Finally... Something miracles happened. At every show, I tallied my sales, and this was the first time that my characters came in at number one. They weren't, they were tied at number one in terms of sales, like, whoa, this is awesome. You got to be kidding me, right? So in that year, 2018, I'd already decided that I was only gonna go to two shows, WonderCon 2018 and LA Comic Con 2018. So later on that year again, I went to LA Comic Con, and guess what happened, y'all? The Card of Assassins did it again. They came in number one. This time tied up with uh with Black Panther. The first time they were tied up with Dragon Ball Z, because I can't. What I count up is the, not Dragon Ball Z, but I drew. I have this drawing. I drew of Goku versus Vegeta. I remember that. So first show, WonderCon 2018, they tied with Goku versus Vegeta in terms of sales, and Sonic the Hedgehog, I believe, in terms of total sales. But then the second time it was Black Panther, because Black Panther was spit fired that year, as y'all know. And I was just selling. I sold so many Black Panther posters, but then I sold so many Card of Assassins posters too. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Um, I was like, they tied up. This is amazing. And then the the big, the big uh, coup de gras, where in 2019, WonderCon 2019, that was my last show before this crazy pandemic came in. They came in clear number one, no tie, no nothing, just straight beat out everybody. I mean, it was just, they smoked everybody. I mean, I sold so many cards of Assassin stuff, apparel, posters. It was on, y'all. And I was like, finally, I made it. I had realized people finally recognized them. And it was on that version five, right, that I realized, okay, it is time to write a book. So then, 
right around that time, I was stu- I started writing that book. And right now, I'm still on the book. I've been four years into it. The book is almost done. Um, it's got about half a page left. And I was realizing it is time to do something else. It's time to focus on this online store. Get going with my social media. I have got to get Card of Assassin. And now I do. I can post my Card of Assassin's stuff. And it gets as much as chance as anything else that I post out there that I've drawn. And so now, like, this book is almost ready. The goal is to build this universe to as many places and as many things as I want. So finish this book. Strive for animation. Get the animation going. Movies. Video games. Um, I mean, you name it. That I, you name it. It's probably going to uh, footwear, apparel. Um, I mean, I'm just everywhere now, and I'm so grateful that I had the patience and the courage to create these characters. And now I'm going on version six because the book, the book now that I'm almost finishing has allowed me to create version six. I'm not going to tell y'all what's going on in the book, so y'all have to wait till I'm done. But it's now, now we're on version six. So as soon as I'm done copywriting this book and all that documentation stuff. Y'all are going to start seeing version 6 on the website at sciencefictionshop.com. I mean, y'all, let me tell y'all something. It is, it is important for you to have the courage to pursue your vision. Um, nobody else can tell you what your vision is, man. Only you can. And I'm glad that I had the courage to create these characters because they were really inspired by myself, my two brothers, my sister, my two best friends, my dream girl. You know, I wanted a woman that was powerful that if I was going to put any kind of woman, the woman had to be powerful. She had to be independent. She had to be a woman that was going to have my back. Even till today, any woman that I talk to, if you're not, if you don't have a great heart, I'm not interested in you because beauty is great, but nothing matters more than a great heart and loyalty. So, you know, that's where Cynthia came from. Then, of course, you got the villains, the assassins led by Lord Sun Tzu. You got Artillery, Kanji, Revo, Excursion, Snipes, Yukon, uh, the Coyotes. I mean, like having all these characters, man, is 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 the most amazing. And like I said, some of the villains are based on my family members, cousins, at least uh, two cousins specifically. And I'm just so grateful that I have the courage to pursue it. So, y'all, it's really important for you to have a vision for something, not be afraid to pursue it, and pursue it with everything and all the energy, all the strength, all the vision that you can muster, man. Because you never know what you can accomplish. So, as I always say to people, never underestimate your possibilities. So, y'all, Kaja for Assassin Universe is on and it's growing and it's going to be a titan not massive it's going to be a titan uh, i mean I, i've got so many great things that i want to accomplish y'all so i want to thank y'all for listening this podcast is produced written and directed by i do booker jr please check out our website at sunnyfishingshop.com please subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen whether that's apple desa spotify amazon music and you can also listen to our website at sunnyfishingshop.com please follow us on our social media platforms at twitter instagram tiktok facebook and youtube all at Science Vision. You can also please review us, rate us, give us a five star, don't be a hater. And as always, continue to aspire and achieve. Have a great week, y'all. Stay safe. Peace. <laughs>